Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and this time I'm going to want you to keep calm and carry on, especially if you are a Sony person, um, because I think Sony products are awesome, and I think their Alpha cameras are awesome in so many ways but I think they may be fudging some of their numbers a little bit, and I want to present that evidence to you. Now, I will tell you right off the bat that I'm disabling comments on this video. I'm doing that for a specific reason, because anytime I say anything negative about a Sony product, I will receive hate, hate, hateful comments. Um, and I, my view is, if you have a different opinion, I don't really like getting hateful comments, so if you have a, uh, get a, have a different opinion, make your own video and prove me wrong. So, so that's the bottom line, and then I also wanted to say, let's look back at our exposure triangle. So what does this mean? This means ISO, or the gain on the sensor basically, that's international standard units, so that should always be consistent, but it seems like companies other than even Sony kind of have their own way of determining that. I've seen that with Nikon too, for instance. F is your aperture, right? That's a constant, should be. Uh, time, we hope, is time is a constant, is a constant, unless we're in some sort of non-Newtonian kind of high physics something or another. But in our world on Earth, time is a constant. And so what does that mean? That means that if I change my aperture by one stop, I double the light. So just because the way that stops are kind of weird. So if I went from an F of 5.6 to an F of 4, that's one F stop. I'd be going down, but making my aperture more bigger, I would be doubling the light. If I went from one second of exposure to two seconds of exposure, I'd be doubling the light. Likewise, if I went from one quarter second to one half second, I would be doubling the light. And so the same should apply to the gain that we're talking about with an ISO. So technically, if I double my ISO, I should be doubling the gain on the sensor, which is not theoretically correct, but doubles the light sensitivity. We could put it that way. So if I go from an ISO of 1600 to 3200, I'm doubling the light sensitivity. If I go from an ISO of 3200 to 6400, I'm doubling the ISO sensitivity, or I'm doubling the sensor sensitivity. Okay, that should all be clear, and these are international units. Now, how you figure them out should be standardized, I would think, but again, not just Sony. I've seen this with Nikon, and I'm sure I would see this with other cameras too. If I looked hard enough, it seems like people come up with their own way of determining um, what ISO means. And since we tend to buy cameras based on their ISO performance, this would be an important factor. So here's the bottom line. I'm gonna give it to you right away. The bottom line is, is that the Sony A77 or Alpha 77 II does perform better than the original Alpha 77 when it comes to high ISO performance. But that improvement is, I would say, a modest or slightly moderate, probably more modest improvement. And you would not know that looking at the, if you just did a simple ISO check. So I'm gonna show you um, a little setup that I did. I also have another video that you can look at that looks at this, cons this comparison in a somewhat different way, a little, little softer view. Um, but what I'm going to show you are uh, it's the original image and crops. These crops are not all exact because I'm just doing them by sight. And, uh, well, watch the video and let me know what you think. So, here we go. Okay, we're in Aperture right now, and I'm leaving all the data on the screen so you can know that I'm not fudging anything. Um, and some of the crops, of course, are slightly different from each other because I was just doing this by sight but they give you a good enough idea. So this is the overall scene being lit above by a kitchen light and from the side by just a window. And we're going to focus in on this area here for the simple reason that it includes some texture, some print, something dark, 
Um, and so it kind of gives us a little bit of an overview of the noise performance of the camera. So the first, oops, got to get the right thing there. So the first shot here is the Alpha 77 and that is at an ISO 6400 and it looks pretty terrible. However, if we look at the Alpha 77 2, and again, look at the shutter speed here, it's 1 400th of a second. If we look at the Alpha 77 2 at 6400, wow, it looks significantly better. But also check out the fact that the shutter speed is half in other words, it's doubled. We went from 1 400th of a second to 1 200th of a second. We're letting in twice as much light. So if we ignore the, with the ISO listing, which is just a number that's listed, and we go and look at the Alpha 77 at 3200, but again, same, IS, uh, same shutter speed of 1 200th of a second, same f-stop of 5.6, so that's really what matters, right? The other number seems to be artificial. We can definitely see that this looks a little bit noisier than the previous picture, but that's just maybe the algorithm used or really even the strength setting because this actually has more detail than the previous picture. So now let's take a look at the Alpha 77 II at 3200, again f5.6. Please note the shutter speed of 1 125th of a second. And now if we look at the Alpha 77 1, I guess you'd call it, at, let's go, that's 3200, at 1600, again, it's 1 100th of a second so it's a little bit more light coming in. The noise reduction is a little less aggressive, but the shutter speed isn't all that different. So I'm going to go back again. This is the Alpha 77 II f5.6 at 1 125th of a second. So a little less light is going in than here, f5.6. Uh, with one one hundredth of a second, so a little more light coming in, not that much. Um, this seems a little more noise reduction apply, a little slightly more slimmery. This seems a little less noise reduction applied, a little more noisy, but the print seems a little clearer and I'm cropped a little closer, I know that. Um, but really, ignore the ISO value because what does that really mean? So let me get out of the screen and we'll come back to you. Okay, well, there you had it. Um, in my opinion, at least my opinion in this one setting, suggests that the improvement in high ISO performance between the two cameras is modest. Um, it's present. It looks like they're using slightly different algorithms or maybe a, just a higher noise reduction setting. Um, and it does look like there is some improvement, but it's not as dramatic as looking at the ISOs would indicate. Just for the record, you could have seen them on the side. These were cameras that used the identical uh, 16 to 50 stock lens. Um, they were both taken, all pictures were taken at f5.6. The light was virtually the same. These photos were taken within a matter of, of just minutes. Um, and there wasn't like a variation in light. Uh, the, there was no uh, you know, EV correction done on any of them or no correction whatsoever. These were uh, JPEGs because that's what I'm mostly interested in. Of course, if you use draw files, you might be able to clean things up a little bit more, but I shoot a lot of JPEG and I think a lot of other people too do that too, so I wanted to do that. Um, and this was at 26 millimeters, the, the original picture was at 26 millimeters. So you can draw your own conclusion. Please feel free to make a video and post it if it opposes my view or if it supports my view. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, if we have an international standard organization that determines ISO, if it's to be meaningful, it has to be standardized. If I tell you that this cup contains 12 ounces 
and then I tell someone else that this cup contains six ounces and someone else that it contains eight ounces, it doesn't give you valuable information. Um, it's got to be standardized, right? So you have a great day and I just wish you all well and uh, please give my podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's on iTunes and other podcatching sites and please subscribe. Um, thanks a lot. Bye.